But again, when you talk about goal, uh, and I realize that one of the analysis or the intention of government is also to see how they can boost uh, or other sectors. And uh, in a system whereby you just reminded us that we have a, a mono economy yeah. uh, just based on oil exportation. And if we don't have any other that we can actually export, readily export, how does that help? the local business when they thought that uh, we should now start exporting others uh, out of the country. Now, the thing is that... I mean, one would have thought that we would have developed that uh, other sector or sectors before right. we actually key in this. That's right. Now, Nigeria has um, about 25% of all the natural endowments in the world. Nigeria. All the natural endowments in the world are in Nigeria. 25%. So you see that oil is just a part. But all the effort, because it's easy to get this and make money and all that. Other sectors are, you know, uh, uh, where Nigeria can make money. Now, even then, there was a study, I keep saying this, to draw the attention of government. There was a study done by a government agency, Smeden in Abuja, which they found that even, our, okay, if you said that the strategy is a factor endowment development strategy, using what you have to build on this and so that you can use it to do, get whatever you don't have. In all the 774 local governments, there are about two natural endowments, I call it products, which could, a cluster of industry could be built in all the local governments. In each local government? In each local government. A study was done, and they have it there in Abuja. I have seen it. That's why I keep harping on it. So we, we need to look at that. Even at this uh, interest rate or fighting inflation and all that, forget the CBN. Now, what they could also do, what they could have done is, once the local productive capacity is improved or increased, you find that even though inflation is going up, it will absorb the productive capacity is, you know, we are able to absorb whatever effect it has. Because of what? As they're working in parallel. The productive capacity is, is increasing, inflation is increasing, but at the end, in, 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 in the long run, everything, it will, you won't even have the effect of the inflation felt by the people because employment will be created, uh, people, most of the uh, items will be produced here. It's just so, a, a policy, something that will, to, for them to have the, the will, the, the will, the look at the people, because the policies are not the look, look at the impact on the people. You keep talking about the people. You're also a communication expert. Yeah. Let's look at it if we had uh, maybe sufficient uh, sensitization before this particular move by the government. Uh, because one would have thought that over time there would have been some gradual, you know, talking, sensitization to the people before this drops finally on them. Uh, did we get that? No, 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 no. And there's a danger when you say, look, you want to develop the Naira. The Naira. A lot of people will now, you know, stuck up, apart from the few that have already done that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of people will now, okay, say, okay, let's keep more dollars so when it comes down, they offload and all that. So that's the danger in doing that. But again, uh, a, a, a lot of talking would have been done in other areas. Say, look, uh, like the former American president would say, when you tell the people the truth, the nation is safe. So, to tell us exactly what is going on in the economy is important. Okay? That the dwindling oil price, even bef before the budget, they were talking about $75. And I said, look, why don't you have this benchmark of $50? $50. $50. So that even though it falls and all that, the excess, you put it out there well, for seven. You know the politics. I'm sure you're also not in <laughs> <laughs> unaware of the politics around the excess credit account and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, also between the National Assembly and the executive arm of government, each time the budget is presented, the first thing that's looked at yeah. is what's the price, what's the proposed price. Yes, but uh, you find that those people well, yeah. who were kicking against all these uh, savings, national savings, are the ones now benefiting from it. You know, remember some governors took the uh, 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 presidency to, to court. Mm -hmm. They should bring the money, let's share. That this is not the time to, uh, 
to save money and all that. You know, so do, you agree, think, yeah. do you also agree with that? And because here we are, we're saying that our economy is not yet where it should be. Uh, we're trying to kickstart the economy. The CBN2 is also doing its part. They're also giving loans. I think they recently kickstarted this uh, two billion naira loan for two billion naira. I need correction here. Yeah. Or for small and medium business. Two hundred billion. Two hundred billion, I think. Yeah, but and but I, think I, we know the Delta they just kickstarted that. You yes. Know. And so. Yeah. Two hundred twenty billion. Yeah. It, it would seem that. They are aware that you know the economy. Something is to be done I, about about small businesses as well. I call that distractions, CBN distractions. Two hundred and twenty billion is distraction. Is a distraction. They don't have for the capacity to do all that. You are giving to two two hundred twenty billion to who, and who is going to give it out when there are no venture capital firms? But you've seen how they, they you've seen the vehicle. They they're going through the state government. State government. Who 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 do they have the capacity? Can they manage this one? Can, do they understand how businesses think? And that's the challenge I have with them passing money through the conventional banks. The economy cannot grow that way. The economy, okay, look at Israel, for instance. Israel, they have over 240 venture capital firms. That is how you grow the economy. If a population of 7 million, if you have an idea today to run a business, a business idea today, by tomorrow you are starting that business. You cannot wait and all that. Do you know how many ideas I have? I've been chasing money. I mean, the loans, bank loans, they give me money to finance this thing. So you know, until we pass money through the venture, encourage the establishment of uh, venture capital firms, private equity firms, they are the ones that can, you know, actually, they understand how uh, small businesses think. You know, they can I'm actually support small business, not conventional banks. So how do you think we can actually help the growth of these venture capital firms? Now, you establish all these banks should know the channel to conventional banks. Venture capital firms can go to this bank, draw this money, sit down with the entrepreneur. Are the interest rates yeah. of 20%? No, 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 you see, 20%? no, because one is that they also, it's like equity. They have a way of uh, running. It's, it, should not, it should not be the interest rate, you know, has to come down. In the first place, take for instance, uh, one rich man uh, gave money to for small business about uh, seventy or seventy-five billion or something, and he passes it to the uh, BOI. At what? At what? That money should have been channeled to venture capital firm, and it's interest-free. Monies from uh, these uh, pension funds could also be given to this. These people can borrow this money at a cheaper rate, long term, and use it to support small businesses. Look, I have seen businesses supported by these venture firms, which have also made progress. Mm. ABC Transport, for instance, they wanted to expand. And what happened? Uh, uh, Capital Alliance gave them about 300 million uh, uh, to invest it and took 30%. Within five years, they took ABC to public and existed. The, the transport company is doing well. And uh, uh, you know, uh, Capital Alliance have also look out from the same thing. Artists, you know, assistant. You this know. is how, you, this is, if we have, I'm not sure we have up to 10 venture capital firms in there. Uh, I'll give it a quote. He said, uh, in his words, I see the Naira being devalued by 20% as time progresses. I have repeatedly said that mopping up the Naira to achieve exchange rate stability is wrong. And he said, we have not learned from what happened to the Ghanaian and Zimbabwean currencies. Yeah, yeah, I agree with him. Now, because in Zimbabwe, remember there was a time that, um, uh, inflation was uh, how many million percent and all that. What did they do? They started using dollar. If you want to buy anything in dollar, you buy in dollar. Today, inflation is about less than 2% in Zimbabwe. And that was why people didn't understand when he got to, um, when Nancy Mandela uh, at the funeral, black people stood up to clap for him. They didn't understand that. Because that was what he was able to turn around the whole Zimbabwe economy. Now, why should the CBN have monopoly of the foreign exchange? Okay, if you if you are, for instance, uh, Suleiman, you you are, you you do business and you bring in dollar, you should be allowed to spend your dollar. If the uh, uh, amount uh, uh, the, sh the sharing, when the money comes, dollar comes, and then they have to, what the CBN does is to convert this money, maybe print naira equivalent of the dollar, and then fix the, the rate. Why not allow market forces? Now, what that means is that if, for instance, 
uh, you give dollar to every state. The state will go to any of the banks with your dollar. I have so much dollar. Do you have Naira equivalent? The bank will say, okay, if I must buy this, this is how much I can afford to pay. That way, you are allowing market, you don't need to print another Naira to support this. But they have monopoly that I can't even, you know, change my dollar and uh, the amount of, uh, that I want to. I cannot get value unless what the CBN fixes. So if you have to do that, you, you, to support the, 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 the Naira, you, you need to do other things. You need to allow the, you know, remove monopoly from the, the foreign exchange so that you'll be able to, uh, you know, the, the market forces will be able to determine how much. By the time you, you have, some banks may not have the kind of uh, dollar, a Naira equivalent of the dollar you have, the, where they share the money to all the uh, different tiers of government. Well, that's the stance that uh, Dr. Roy has always taken. But, you know, taking a look at the factors that we've seen so far, the Naira is dwindling, um, oil prices are also dwindling. The world and I have to dwindle because the CBN, you know, made that particular move. They mm -hmm. are trying to see what they can do to salvage the economy. A lot of people already predicted that money, the interest rate was going to be in increased yeah. when this uh, yes. committee sat, you know, just on Monday. Yes. What is your projection? What are you seeing in 2015? How do you think we will get out of this? Is it looking good? Well, in the short term, the 2015 is um, we should just prepare for you know for a hard time you know but it won't last for long why are you saying it very carefully i mean if it's <laughs> going to be hard i don't want i don't want to scare it's going to be hard yeah. yeah you know in uh, there's something we call the uh, normative and positive economics and uh, uh, you know when you're talking to the public you have to be a bit more uh, uh, positive and uh, when we are together is that what do you think is that what, is, 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 is that